Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tri Rivers Baptist Area uh, Weekly Monday Podcast. I'm Richard Ray, your Director of Missions of Tri Rivers Baptist Area, and to my left now is I am Talon Keeney, your Ministry Assistant for Tri Rivers Baptist Area, and we're so glad you could join us today. We are on site in Dublin, Texas, at Christian Women's Job Corps, and we are so excited to get to interview Miss Juanita Brawley, who is the Director of Christian Women's Job Corps. So we just want to say a warm welcome and thank you for joining us but also thank you for allowing us to be here where you thank get you. to work in, in in your your home really yes yes thank you came you. in on your day off <laughs> thank because you. there's nothing going on so it's a little quiet around here but we are in your what your the computer room this is the classroom the classroom yeah. what you can see behind us here and so yeah we are honored to be here today and and before we get to uh juanita and her testimony and, and, and what christian women's job corps is doing for the kingdom kind of get you updated kind of where we've been um at in the in Travers baptist area um, this um, past week, we continue to work with our churches on a weekly basis and um, just taking care of all their ministry needs. But as most of y'all know, my, my mother's been in Scott and White Hospital in Temple uh, with pancreatic cancer. And I've um, got good news today. Matter of fact, just a little bit ago on our phone that she'll be coming home today. And so I know she's excited about that. Um, the cancer is in a, in a location where it looks like they'll be able to do surgery. So uh, I do appreciate all the churches that have been praying for her and for our family. And we just know God's going to um, intervene in a mighty way and we just give him the glory and uh, we know he's a great physician and healer so but she'll be coming home today just some and just got that text here just a little bit ago so it's so it's good to be here i got good news and we're going to hear some more good news which is awesome um sunday i was at briggs baptist church and um, they're actually in burnett county but they're part of Travers baptist area land pass association had a great time with there got to sing a special got to deliver the, the word of god had a great fellowship meal with them they can cook without a doubt um, <laughs> they are amazing cooks out there and the wonderful facilities and we got to share about uh ministry and and ministry opportunities in that area so it was it was a great day yesterday and i just appreciate them allowing me to come out there and uh, we like doing that for all our churches going there just to visit kind of see where they're at see what we can do to help um yeah, better yeah. assist them to you know to do the work of the ministry and that's furthering the kingdom and so that's where i was at sunday how about you I was at uh, FBC Gatesville this past Sunday, and it was just a, a great time of worship. I've uh, got to lead there uh, quite a few times now, and uh, it's just a great time. Um, thank you, Mark Rich, pastor, for re reaching out and uh, just glad to help and glad to help serve in a worship supply capacity for our area churches. Amen. And uh, kind of let you just kind of a, a reminder of some things that are going on. Please, if you don't get our newsletter, get Get our newsletter um, has all our information on there everything that's upcoming whether it be the retreats whether it be trainings whether it be just ministry opportunities we're looking for um, um local church missionaries to go mm -hmm. in our churches and serve in that capacity we're also going to be looking for coming up shortly you'll be able to go to our website and our newsletter as well and we're looking for summer uh, missionaries to work in our in our area churches vacation bible schools that nature go on mission trips with some of our churches they just need assistance so if that's something you'd like to do and we we, we pay for that as well but um, you'll be able to uh, sign up for that and and do that. Even And that includes our summer camps at Tri-Rivers Host, free summer camps. All that's in the newsletter. And uh, But if you'd like to help us assist in that as well, and we're looking for those that have graduated high school who love the Lord and uh, come and, and minister to these students as they come to these camps. Just a couple quick notices. WMU Texas Annual Meetings, March 25th, 26th at First Baptist Church Corpus Christi. I know we're going to be there. Are you going to be able – are you going to that? I won't be able to. You won't be? Okay. Oh, okay. Well, we'll go on your behalf. <laughs> Thank we'll, you. We'll tell you everything that's going on. Uh, but we're going to be there along with some other people in our, in our, in our area. It's going to be a great time. Yes, it is. We also have our long-term pastor and spouse retreat. That's April 22nd, 23rd. That'll be hosted at the tri Retreat Center. So if you've served in a ministry, in the pastorate ministry for 15 or more years, it doesn't have to be at the same church. It can be multiple churches if that's the case. And we encourage you to come out because we want to encourage you. We're going to have... Um, Pastor Ryan Dennis from Trinity Baptist Church from New York City is going to come and lead worship. as And it's going to be a great time. I encourage you to come out for that and just to be uh, encouraged in a mighty way. Again, you get all this information on the website and the newsletter. We're also going to have a tri Rivers Retreat Center, no payoff celebration, and a gospel concert kind of all combined. That's going to be on April 24th. That's Sunday night, beginning at 5 o'clock. We're going to have some food. We're going to have some good gospel singing. Um, Pastor Ryan from New York City, Trinity Baptist Church up there, he'll be leading out on that gospel singing. I'm going to be doing some singing. Talon's going to be doing some singing. We're, going, right. to have, we're going to have That's a right. good time. I was just praising what God has done. And then we'll have a note burning at the end. So I encourage you to come out for that. You can RSVP right now that you can be there. We have several people have already done that. So please do that. Go to the website, newsletter, Facebook page. If you, if you get it in a, 
text, which we'll send out the newsletter today. That's and right. You'll see that information yeah. in there. So all that's there. You can also pre-register for the camps um, for this summer as well. So we can get a, a kind of get ahead of the game on, on who's all going to be there so we can be best prepared to serve those students. So that kind of gets you caught up. If we went too fast for you, you can go to our website. Again, you can go to our newsletter and get all that information. That's right. And if you are not subscribed yet, please, you can comment down below. We see comments live from Facebook, YouTube, uh, across the different platforms that we are streaming right now. Just uh, let us know. We, you can give us your email. You can give us your phone number. Right. And we can get it to you either way or both ways. I get it both ways. Just whichever one I see first Amen. so I don't miss anything, you know. So just... And that, we encourage you to connect. And that brings us to today. Mm -hmm. We are at the Christmas Women's Job Corps here in Dublin with um, the director, uh, Juanita Brawley, and we are in their, one of their classrooms, and it's, it's an amazing facility. I know you're doing amazing work here, but I want to let our uh, – we know we've got some people watching live right now. If you're watching live, you'd like to ask her a question or you have a comment or something like that, uh, go ahead and post that just as you would in the comment box. We'll see that, and we'll get to those questions toward the end of our, our visit, okay? And I know uh, we're exciting time. But before we get to everything, Jen, we'd like you to just share a little bit about yourself, your family, what got you here, you know, and just okay. kind of just we'd turn it over to you right now. OK, well, thank you for having me and just giving me the opportunity to share what God's doing at Christian Women's Job Corps. Amen. Uh, my name is Juanita Brawley and my husband, Johnny, and my daughter, Jaylee, um, and I have been serving uh, as uh, church planters. Uh, with the International Mission Board for the past 17 years. Uh, we started in Uganda, and um, we served a term there, and then we transferred to the mountains of Veracruz, Mexico. We did church planting among indigenous in the local language of the tribes that wow. live there. Uh, we took a leave of absence um, last March, and uh, we've been uh, home since March, and now I'm here serving as Christian Women's Job Corps. Director. So how do you connect with Christian Women's Job Corps? Christian wow. Women's Job Corps has a thrift store. Okay. And uh, my mother-in-law lives uh, uh, close to uh, Dublin. And so she would come and visit with the ladies. And when she heard about the opening, she said, "You, I just know you're the person. Ah, oh, okay. And so uh, she was the one that really encouraged me to apply. <laughs> oh, very good. Yeah, so how long have you been director here then? I uh, since uh, the summer. Okay. Yeah, since All June. Right. So you weren't here. You got here in March. So yes. Within a few months, you're the director. Here. Yes. Well, it was <laughs> thing like a God ordained thing. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah Very good. It's, it's exciting. Very <laughs> awesome. All right. So a little bit more about your your family. Um, yes. Uh, well, we, um, my husband and I, um, after being in the mission field for um, about seven eight years, uh, we went. Um, we were in the mountains of Veracruz and God opened the door for us to adopt an indigenous um, baby. And so Jay Lee uh, came into our lives uh -huh. and she's been with us 12 years now. She's 12. Uh, 12 years old. And, um, she's from awesome. the tribe called Popoluca. Popoluca. And we also work with the Nahua uh, people group in the mountains. Okay. So what did that look like there? You know, someone just kind of goes, you're, you're, you're throwing out some names, locations. You know, what does that look like to be a missionary in that area? Uh, it's, um, they're very, cl um, these groups are close to the Gulf of Mexico okay. in the mountains. Um, they're like rainforest, very tropical Okay. and they have waterfalls. Uh, they have, um, tropical fruits the whole year. We have mangoes, papayas, they grow the whole year. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, a lot of, um, different tropical, um, monarch I want to say maracuya, but it's a passion fruit. We have a lot of tropical fruits in the mountains. And awesome. the people uh, have their dialect, and their second language is Spanish. Oh, okay. And so doing um, a lot of our church planning work was done orally with them. And most of our, uh, the way we told stories was chronologically uh, telling stories, uh, but telling them orally. We wouldn't memorize them and then sometimes we had uh, a person with us they would sit next to us as we were learning the language and they would tell the story in the language and um, and then we would repeat the story several times until um, they could tell us a story back oh, okay and so we would move chronologically until from the Old Testament into the New Testament. Uh, and we had about 25 stories that we would 
go through. Um, after we finished the chronological stories, we would move into the book of Acts and, and do chronological stories in the book of Acts of the new church. Mm-hmm. And as the locusts began to understand God's love for them, um, that would understand sal- and understand salvation, you know, that they no longer needed to make sacrifices to the rain or you know, to the, uh, the corn. <laughs> You know, right. They, then they um, long to have a relationship with our Lord, and they would come to Christ, and we would baptize them in the river. My husband would go to the river oh, with them. Oh, that is awesome. So what drew you to that area? I mean, I know the Lord called you there, but, you know, what was that calling like, I guess? We um, we started, uh, we applied for uh, the indigenous. Uh, we worked in tribes in Uganda, and uh, my husband really enjoyed working among smaller tribes okay. um, and the smaller tribes um, are isolated from society you know they live in the mountains um, they don't come down to the city much and so um, you have to have skills like you know buying a chicken and taking it home and cooking it you know and, oh, wow. and so my husband grew up in in Toler, Texas and so he grew up um, with going to the stock shows and, oh, yeah. and taking okay. showing his chickens and then he would take it home and they would cook it. And so he knew the whole process. Um, I grew up in Dallas and so You didn't have any chickens in Dallas. We don't we don't know. <laughs> I mean not, not we didn't we didn't have uh yes, we didn't grow our own chickens in okay. Dallas. We would just go to the store and buy eggs at the supermarket and frozen right. chicken. And so that was uh, really um uh it it just um God gave my husband a lot of peace about serving among the indigenous where we had to go to the market um every day well that really is i mean you go from here to there i mean that's a that's really a leap of faith that's trusting in god because it had to be a, a cultural shock a little transition yes. time for you, your family as your mission are there a lot of missionaries in that area uh no okay not a lot we were the only outsiders in the village okay and and there's um not a lot of outsiders in those small villages so when y'all came back, did somebody kind of go to replace you? Is there someone there now that ministering to those people? We uh, usually we drove to the cities and we would um, visit the churches that were planted there by other missionaries. Okay. And the we would um, have them adopt. They adopted our work. Okay. And so they um, now the 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 other church in the city the. Um, it's like a mother church, you know, we would say here, mm-hmm. sure. they go up to the mountains and do mission trips and they adopted the work to continue oh, it. And it's awesome. exciting to see that. It is. So you kind of laid that foundation and they're, yes. they're that's, that's awesome. I'm going to be able to do that. And just, you know, the, the, talk to someone that's taking that leap of faith, that trust saying, you know, I'm going to really just get out of my total comfort zone outside of your husband with chickens and everything. But, <laughs> but, you know, get out of that comfort zone to go to another country. I mean, that takes a, a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, you know, in America, but, People have a hard time just going across the street sometimes just knocking on someone's doors and introduce them to Jesus. And here you're going across the country, you know. Yeah. So if you're going to take what you learned there and apply it here in America um, to be a witness um, to someone to spread the gospel, is there any correlation to that? Uh, do you see where you're going to go, you know? I, as humans, we all have the same basic struggles okay. of, of um, we all worry when our children get sick. Uh, we all worried um, about finding a job of what will I eat, you know, next month. And so we, all of us need to know that there is a living God that cares for them, mm-hmm. that loves them, and that he is going to fight for them and provide for them. Uh, and, and they just um, need to know that if they understand that, He's for them. That they all, you know, they need to do is call out to Him. Amen. And that God is faithful. And I think that's what we are doing here, at Christian Women's Job Corps, sharing with the ladies and saying that you know there there is a living God that loves you, and even though um, you might um, be living at a shelter or even though you're uh, in a difficult situation in your life, there is a living God that that cares for you and he is going to walk with you every step of the way of your journey that you're in right now. You know, the Solomon calls it seasons. There's a yeah, season. It is. And um, as 
these women are going through difficult seasons, they need to know that they're not alone and that uh, God is faithful and will, will work with, you know, he'll walk with them and he will do miracles. Uh, things will happen in their lives that they can only, you know, there's no explanation except for a living God. And that's what we want the women to know and to really understand that God has been faithful in the past and that he's going to still faithful today. Amen. Amen. So really what you're, what you're sharing is, and, and if anyone's listening, is that um, regardless of logistically where you're at in the, in the world, where the, regardless of the culture, the struggles are still the same for every human. Yes. You know, and, uh-huh. and that's what you're saying. And, but our God loves us all and, and delivers us all. I mean, that's what, and scripture tells us that, you know, you're going to have many troubles, mm-hmm. but the Lord delivers him from them all. Yes. I mean, that's, that's just, that's just, that's God saying, you're going to have troubles. It's just, mm-hmm. because we live in a troubled world. We live in a sinful world, mm-hmm. but God is God. He's sovereign and he is going to deliver us from all. And that may be the deliverance is walking through the early gates of heaven, you know, but he yes. is going to deliver us from, from them all. So yes. that's a great testimony. What you're sharing is that your neighbor across the street, Maybe having the same feelings and struggles that someone in Uganda is having. Yes. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so you can share the same message. Yes. And 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 they should and it could be received the same way. Yes. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. awesome. That's great. <laughs> we got a little sidetrack. I know way I'm off my notes, but you got me kind of going on that. Uh, but that does bring us a Christian Women's Job Corps. You're talking. You know, this is another mission field, another uh, another place to uh, meet people who are struggling or just going through challenges or troubles and you're here to meet those needs because that's what we're called to do so can you kind of give us an overview of christian women's job corps and what you're actually doing here at, at in dublin yes um we have a it's a 12-week program uh for ladies and we have a classes on tuesdays and wednesdays and we start at nine and i open with a bible study in the mornings. And right now for this um, semester, I chose uh, a song to be my theme is Lauren Deacon. Mm-hmm. And um, her song, it's titled, You Say. You say, I am strong. You say, I am love. You say, I'm yours. And I take that and I really break it down to what that really means and help the ladies understand that God is going to remind them of who they are um, and their value is found in Christ, in who he says we are. And uh, knowing that will give them the strength to go and apply for a job that maybe they think they can't qualify for. And so I start with a Bible study and um, then uh, we have computer classes, we have business management classes we have cooking classes so we have classes on tuesdays and wednesdays and then um we also have a thrift store and uh, we some of the participants um we they do they give back to the ministry by volunteering at the thrift store and so we do volunteer work in the afternoons okay at the store um and our stores open from tuesday through saturday and um the funds from the thrift store um come back to this um to the question okay job tuesday call. through saturday what times are you open they're open from 10 to um 5 10 to 5 or okay. 5 30 on tuesday and thursday okay. and then on saturday till 4. okay so if anyone's listening that they yes. come there at they time to come to the thrift store and it is an amazing thrift store i mean you got a and lot you, of things in there yes, yes. and this we get awesome donations every day about four to five donations a day do you really yes. oh that is amazing so uh what kind of donations if we're at you know talking to yes. churches you know what that you receive a lot of people bring um, house items or clothes. Um, usually, um, some furniture are just difficult for us to carry the right. furniture in, but we do receive furniture as well. But uh, mostly, a lot of garage sales sell items like clothing. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of our uh, people, a lot of our clients that come to the store, they're looking for working clothes for their Makes husbands sure. or, um, or their kids or, or their kids their school and, and everything. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's. Um, yeah, it's a really good ministry for the community as well. Okay, and what's the address here? A thousand six North Patrick. There you go. <laughs> I that right. one. Yes, a thousand six yeah, North Patrick, but it's really right here yeah. on Main Street. On Main Street. Yeah, yeah, you can't miss it if you come to the four. Uh, everyone's been uh, Dublin bottling work seems like yes. around this area, but if you come to the uh, the, the stoplight, the four way, yes. it's right there on the right. If you're coming from Carlton area, if you're coming from Stephenville, it's on your still on your right. So. It's at the heart of the town. It really, really. is. Yeah, it has a, a 
big sign. You can see it. I mean, big storefront. Uh, easy to locate. So if you're a church or, or an individual like to donate, can they bring that anytime that you're open Tuesday through Saturday? Yes. Okay. And then if you got furniture, apparently bring it in and carry it in for them so they don't have to do that. That's thing. right. So, I wanted to mention, I've had it rolling across the screen, um, but connecting with Christian Women's Job Corps and connecting with Miss Juanita Brawley, you can do that through their Facebook or call at the number provided. So just wanted yes. to add that in real quick. Okay. So what kind of computer classes do you have? We have um, a volunteer, a teacher, and she okay. does um, um, basic computers, um, and she starts them off with Word. They, they, by the end of the class, some of the semester, they do a resume. So all the activity and exercises build up for them to have a resume oh, very good. ready. And then um, we also provide for the participants outfits. They get to choose clothes that they can have for an interview if they go to job interviews. So That's that really is nice. our goal for them. So I guess they probably have some mock interviews where you mm -hmm. get to, get yes. to uh, practice that. And, oh, that. That's a great tool, you know, to be able to do that. And uh, so how many volunteers you have that come in and teach the class? You got one for your computer class. Yes, uh, we have two that come and do the cooking class. Okay. Uh, Texas A and M, and they do well. Um, some of the classes are geared towards healthy eating. You know what? Um, well, we can all learn that. <laughs> yes. Um, so it's it's really exciting um, to have that. Uh, we have a um, two volunteers that come and do a sewing class. Oh, nice! And the ladies get to explore sewing. Uh, we have um, a business management um, class as well. Um, and um, we have a uh, group counseling, um, the ladies, we have two classes. One of them is called the group counseling and the other one is called boundaries. And they sit with the counselors and they uh, discuss um, different boundaries in the work area and in relationships. And there's a book that they go through with the counselor. Oh, good. So if someone's it's, out there and maybe mm -hmm. they know someone or maybe themselves kind of go, you know, I could benefit from Christian yes. Women's Job Corps. You know, what's the first step, you know, they, to get uh, signed up? How's that work? Yeah, they um they call and then they can come and pick up an application. Okay. And so there's an application they have to um, apply. Okay. For apply for that for that class. Uh, is that is, when I say class, it's really signing up for a program? It's, yes, it's a program. Okay. And now, does that start at a certain time? Yes, we just um, started in February, the spring semester. Okay. And we're going to... Um, finish the semester in april okay and then we'll start again in september okay the fall we usually do it according to the school we look school at the schedule. school schedule okay mm -hmm. so it's basically two semesters a year mm -hmm. yes. okay and so if someone's in this are they signing up just for i mean what is the program i guess what i'm saying is it the computer the business class yes, the, is it all, all combined? of it together uh -huh. all of it together okay so they begin they we begin the morning at nine and then we have lunch together. Okay. And then we finish at um, two, around two thirty. They uh, we end the program. Some of them stay till three thirty and do work study at the store. Okay. And then they pick up their children. They go to their appointments. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that's Tuesday and, and Wednesday. Wednesday. They mm -hmm. so two days a week they're doing that with. So you're pretty much with them all day those two yes. days. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. And yes. Uh, how many students do you have right now? Uh, we started off with six, um, okay. but right now there's only four. Okay. One of the ladies um, had a baby the day before. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> and then the other lady just, had cancer, as is going to uh, through breast cancer treatments okay, okay. and mm -hmm. decided that she was going to wait till the fall. Sure, that's right. understandable right. as well. Yes. Yeah. So, do you have, um, so if someone's going to apply, can they apply now for the fall? They can. Okay. Yes. Yeah. They okay. can start that way. We, we can start making plans for the okay. fall. So, they would just contact you, mm -hmm. which we got the information on the screen as well, and they could pick up that application. Yes. Okay. Now, I know WMU is a big supporter of Christian Women's Job Corps, as well as Christian Men's Job Corps. Yes. And um, can you kind of share a little bit about WMU? Because we're going to be headed down to the annual meeting and, um, and kind of share, you know, what impact they've made in your ministry as well as right here. Well, when I when I think about the WMU, I, I think about women in action, you know, and very their mission is doing missions, uh, serving, and I I think about this verse in Titus, uh, Titus two, it says teach older women, and then in verse four that they can train the younger women, you know, and, and a lot of um, WMU. Is a group of women getting together and doing missions, and they're even training younger women to continue in their steps um, of doing missions. And 
uh, when we were getting ready to go overseas uh, to Uganda, we received a water filter from WMU yep. and we took um, the water filter and we would collect water from the roof on rainy seasons. And that's the water we would drink uh, is from the water filter that the WMU provided. Wow. Uh, then when we transfer to the mountains of Veracruz, we took our water filter with us <laughs> and we collected water there during the rainy season um, from the roof and it would come into a tank and then it would come into the house and we would collect it um, and drink that water. And God sustained us. <laughs> and I'm really um, and thankful for their work. Yeah, they took they care do. of a practical need, which yes. is clean water. Yes. I mean, that they provided for that uh, for you. Um, outside of the practical, I'm sure they give you the spiritual support and encouragement. Mm -hmm. They um, they have a prayer calendar and they pray for the missionaries. They do. And they pray for us. And they also pray um, uh, by sending. They really encourage me because I would receive um, cards on my birthday. You know, and just a reminder, you're not alone mm -hmm. in this village. You know, you're... We are praying for you, and it's just—it's like a glass of cold water just to get that little um, birthday card that's saying, "I'm praying for you." Um, it's just a, a great encouragement uh, for me throughout the years uh, to know that WMU is behind me, and they're going with me with prayer um, and their prayers. Um, I had a lady in the village one day ask me; um, she said. How have you received any persecution here in our village? Um, and I thought about it and I thought, no, I haven't. And I thought the reason behind that is because WMU ladies are praying for oh. me. I thought there's, there's people praying for me and that's why I haven't, no one's thrown a rock at me. Or at the hedge of protection. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. That is, that is awesome. Yeah. You know, with that prayer, we, we put that, you know, we get that prayer list from WMU and international mission board as well. And we, post that to so our WMU sites as well as our newsletter and so forth because prayer you know well scripturally we know this is the essential yes you know and um, i know you probably do a lot of praying here over the yes. ladies you know and um, you probably pray before you come in i know um, i was praying this morning as we come over here today and you know uh, prayer is essential but what you're talking about it's also uh, it is a hedge of protection yes you know that maybe we're not aware of until someone brings it to our attention mm -hmm. you know, like how God is protecting us. Yes. That's a great testimony yes. of prayer. It is. It yeah. is. And uh, I had a, we had a training with a local pastor in the mountains and he said something that it really um, has stayed with me. He said, you know, the difference between a missionary and a pastor? And I said, no, uh, what is it? And he said, well, a pastor is surrounded by the sheep and a missionary is surrounded by wolves. Mm -hmm. And I thought, but these are invisible wolves that we don't really see, you know, and the reason that they don't hurt us is because of that protection that we have by the prayers of the saints. Because the word says, you know, that the prayers of the saints is powerful and effective. Amen. And, and they are, um, uh, they are protecting us. Um, they, they are going with us. Uh, it, we have a lot of mudslides in the mountains because of the rain. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes we have scary experience driving and just, you know, uh, just knowing that the ladies in back in the U.S. were praying for me. It gave me a lot of peace and courage to continue uh, going every day in the ministry. Wow. I mean, I mean, that's just a great testimony because I always think sometimes when we get the, when we get the other side of heaven, we're there. We're going to if, if we can reflect and look back, you know, it's going to be all those times that. How, how maybe the troubles could have been, but God was there to intervene, mm -hmm. you know, and take care of us because our parents were praying for us or WMU was praying for us, you know, like that hedge of protection was there. Um, you know, God is relevant in everything that we yes. do. I just, sometimes I would look up at the sky and I would say, Lord, can you open heaven so I can see the battle? <laughs> I don't know if my heart <laughs> That's could a handle, great way to look at that. Could my heart handle that, though? I don't That's know. Probably if my not. My heart could handle yeah. being able just to see yeah. the spiritual warfare. Oh, yeah. And it's real. And I it mean, is It real. is real. We just kind of, God is protect, probably keeping us from seeing that because the, the, the yes. terror would be just mm -hmm. uh, unimaginable, but yeah. because he's there. And yeah, there is a lot of spiritual warfare. Um, we had a lot of them in the mountains on the hills. 
sometimes there was a, a Catholic building and the local people would say, you know why there is a Catholic building on top of that hill? And I would say, why? And they would say, well, because it used to be a place where they used to make human sacrifices. Wow. But then when the Spaniards came, they said a Catholic building on top of that. Mm -hmm. And that was interesting um, history for me to see. Um, and so I always wonder about the spiritual warfare um, just being so strong up in the hills and then the, the mentality of, of the, the indigenous, how they saw their world. Um, they needed to make sacrifices to the rain. Um, I had an, a local, one of the local men in the village one day was sitting on his hammock after coming in the afternoon from work. They work in the mornings before the, the sun comes up in the fields and they come around noon to rest when it gets really hot. And one day he said, you know, it's, it hasn't rained. Uh, we're going to have to go. He said, we have to go up to the mountain and we have to take an offering. And if we take an offering in, in, in this hill, we, I mean, in the cave, we're going to have to leave an offering. And then if we leave this offering, the rain will come. And it was interesting. And I, when we asked, why were you going to take us offering? He said, a case of beer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was just interesting just sitting there listening to them, how they understood that there is a spiritual world and and there is power in the spiritual world. Uh, but they don't know that God is over this spiritual power Amen. and God is in control of the rain. Yeah. Um, and so it is, um, it's really important to continue supporting the missionaries that are going out into like, the extreme parts where there's very little. Oh, yeah, I um, agree with that. I mean, or, we could probably talk this forever, but, you know, like what's going on in Ukraine right now? Yes. The, and we know um, we're supporting Texas Baptist men as they're yeah. taking care of missionaries. My son's in Amsterdam, and they actually have refugees uh, that they're taking in and so forth. But uh, And they're experiencing uh, spiritual warfare as well as they you know, mm -hmm. a living warfare, I guess you could say. And so, but that's where prayer comes into play. Yes. You know, it has to start there, you know, and, you know, that's why, you know, Paul tells us to pray without ceasing. So it's not something we just do once and say, okay, we're done. It's, it's a continual walk in prayer, to, you know, how we talk, how we live in our life. It's got to be in prayer. You know, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to flash back to when we visit one other time, because everything you're talking about is you, you, you share with me last time we visited about owning your faith. Yes. And it really struck with me really hard. Matter of fact, we went ahead and named our camps. Oh, it, the theme is own your faith. And so we're going to focus our camps about that this summer. Um, Cause everything you're you've done from being a missionary to being here and talking about the, the, your, your prayer life and how God's been in a spiritual warfare to be able to get through any of that, you do have to own your faith. Can you just talk about just for yes. a little bit what that is? Yes. To um, you? As I look back in my life, you know, what um, has been, impacted my life to be where I am today. I think about um, my experience of coming to the Lord uh, through the work of a whole missionary, right. Dolores Cuby uh, from Missouri. She devoted her whole life to doing church planting in South Dallas. And she came to work when I was in elementary school, about third grade. And she began to teach me to own my faith. And she began to share with me that I could have a relationship with God. I did not need a mediator. And she encouraged me to read the Bible on my own. And she said, you see, Psalms 139 says that God knows your thoughts before one of them begins. And so I went and I began asking God, is it true? That you know my thoughts. Uh, do you know before a thought is in my mind? So I began to uh, experience that through different experiences to see that God does know our thoughts. When I when God led me to Howard Payne, uh, and the first week that I was at Howard Payne. I was doing the registration and I walked into the cafeteria and the lady at the cafeteria said, I'm sorry, we closed the cafeteria. 
the cafeteria is closed. You have to come back for dinner. And so I went outside um, and I sat under a tree and I looked up to heaven. I said, God, you provided manna for the Israelites in the desert and I'm hungry. And as I was thinking those thoughts, I was not even finished with those thoughts when I looked around and I sat, I, I had sat in a pecan tree and I looked around me and there were pecans everywhere. So I started eating pecans. But then I started getting thirsty and I thought, what do I do? I'm so thirsty. So then I walked into the building and there was a water fountain. Uh, so God provided pecans and um, God provided water for me that day. And I thought, God knows my needs even before yeah. I asked because he led me to sit under this pecan tree. When I was in the mountains, I was telling the teenagers um, this story. And I said, you know what happens after you drink? You eat a lot of pecans. Now, they don't have pecans. <laughs> They don't have pecans in the mountains. So they don't know that you get thirsty, right? Because if they only have mangoes and papayas. So I said, you know what happens when you eat a lot of them? And one of the, one of the boys said, you get diarrhea? I said, no. <laughs> I said, yeah, you get, you get thirsty. And then I realized, oh, this is not a good example for the culture. <laughs> they don't have pecans. <laughs> right. um, but God began to show me that, that it, not only does he know my thoughts, but he is active in my life. Amen. And I began to own my faith as a little girl, um, as a, you know, a teenager. And uh, that gave me the confidence to trust him. Uh, with one experience, it led for me to trust him to another experience. They required more faith. You know, they require going outside my comfort zone. Uh, so it's very important for us to own our faith. Amen. And, that, and that, that's what you're teaching here at Chris Williams Job Corps. Yes. It's how to own your faith. Yes. And I, and I, and that's just, I mean, that just really resonated with me since we visited a couple of weeks ago. And I was going, that's just, you can't say it any better than that. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, well, I know we appreciate that you're doing that. You own your faith and that you're Thank sharing you. that your faith here at Christian Women's Job Corps. But before we kind of close out today, I don't know if anyone's made any comments yet or not, but. We want to give you just an opportunity if you'd like to share a word, a little word of encouragement, whatever you'd like to share, a scripture or something like that, and be able to do that. Mm -hmm. That'd be okay? Yes. Okay. Well, you know, I was reading uh, Titus, and in Titus 2, it says, uh, on 2, 3, it says, teach the older women, and then verse 4, that they can train the younger women. But I'll, I'll go ahead and read both of sure, them. It says, ahead. teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live. Not to be slanders or addicted to too much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can train the younger women to love their husband and their children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind and to be subject to their husband so that no one may malign the word of God. You know, so this verse is Paul is to instructing women, older women, to teach the younger women. And, you know, as um, WNU, we have a lot of experience at WNU women. We have um, uh, many of WNU women have raised their children and their grandmothers, and, and they have so much to bring to the younger women that come to Christian Women's Job Corps. Last semester, I want to say all, that all the ladies were under 30. And that I had, I had six women and, and six very young moms. And so our, um, the, Paul is telling us that we have this job, this responsibility, this, this is our mission for us to train the younger women, you know, for us to share our experiences, our struggles, our pains, our sufferings, and, and to say, I did not walk alone and God did miracles in my life. And he is faithful and he's going to do that with you. And whether younger women need to hear that, they need to hear our lives, our testimonies, and they need to hear that they're not alone because I know that most of the times they feel alone. They feel like they don't have a friend. Right. And it's important to know that we, um, we are here and that um, this is a task that's been given to us that we need to be here for the younger women. And we need to train them and that the Lord is active in, in their lives and, and share with them, just see it and, and share with them and say, you know, the, the Lord was faithful when I went through cancer like you did, because we had a young mom that went through, through 
uh, is going through breast cancer right now. And the, one of the volunteers, Miss Carol, said, I had breast cancer and, and God was faithful with me, uh, to me, and he is faithful. And so it was, it's really neat to be able to see someone and say, you know, I yeah. walk where you are walking. And I'm here to tell you that, that God walk with me during that journey. And, and that's what we, we need. We need women to come and walk along these young ladies uh, and say, you know, God uh, was faithful to me and he's going to be faithful to you. He defended me and he advocated for me and he's going to do the same for you. Amen. So I just want to in- encourage ladies to um, they feel um, that they have a testimony um, to come and just share it with some of the ladies. That Amen. So, um, so if someone's out there and, and they're and they're listening to this, um, you re- um, you really w- if they like to volunteer to share their walk of faith. Yes. With the ladies that are walking Become, into the Christian Women's Job Corps to be that mentor, mm-hmm. just to be that friend, as you were saying, yes. in in the, in life. And um, and because we know our greatest friend is our Lord, yes. and uh, we can share that through um, friendship one with another. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yes, amen. And um, it's been a great time. Thank it you. It really has been. You've given us some great word and some great truths, and um, I'm just um, blown away by your faithfulness and you and your <laughs> family as well. Thank I mean, you. you you've done um, so much for the Lord and for His kingdom, and uh, and I just want to tell you thank you, thank you for doing that, and thank we you. appreciate that. And know that we're praying for you. And you're on my uh, daily prayer list that, that that I go over and pray with. So, if you're out there listening, they want to get a hold of you again. I know the information is still scrolling across the screen. That's right. That's right. And um, so, definitely uh, get a hold of Chris Williams Golf Corps. Whether you need to uh, come and, and get an application, or you'd like to volunteer, or you'd like to uh, um, bring some donations, um, you can do that. Um, I, I don't know how else. Better way to the. It's it a great ministry. Yes. It's here. And I guess I want, also want to say before, before we close out today, it's just as if you live in the Dublin area. Yes. If you can get here, you're going to minister to them. Yes, you so, are. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's one later one. Sometimes people think, well, that's just in that area, and that's not the case. It's really if you can get here, um, and you're, you're going to serve them. You're going to open the doors and be there for them. So yes. Pl- Apply and come. Apply and come. <laughs> that's right. You have a friend here. Yes. This is awesome. Well, we appreciate um, you all coming out. Next week, um, we're going to have actually my son, Daniel. We're going to do, he's going to call in um, from Amsterdam and he's going to talk about what are the things that are going on in um, Amsterdam as well as, as their church and what they're doing in the church as they serve as missionaries and, um, and how also the, how this Ukraine um, it, uh, refugees that, that are pouring into the Netherlands as well as other parts of the, of Europe. Um, so we get to share a little bit firsthand what's going on over there. Cause I know we're all praying for those people over there as, as God would just intervene and, and that he would get glorified in, in, in every aspect of that. So, and so, Wani, thank you so much for allowing us to come to your place <laughs> of you. operation, your place of ministry to come yes. and uh, yes. be here. And I'm telling you, you got any final words, and then you can close us in prayer. Yeah, I just want to say thank you again, and just uh, thank you for all there joining us. We're seeing the the likes, the hearts, and uh, we thank oh, yeah. you. we thank you for for joining us. And uh, yeah, just we encourage you to join us next week as we are doing a call-in, as we are trying uh, new things, mm-hmm. right, as we've said from the start of this, to to get different people on, to get different perspectives on ministry, life in the ministry, church, all yeah. of it from youth work to worship to just every aspect we want to try and cover and bring that information to you. And um, like we've said before, if you have any suggestions, if you have any uh, comments that you like to make that you haven't made so far or or want to email or call us with uh, a person that you think would be good like we've already had so far just right. let us know and we would love to try and, and really make that happen Amen. and uh, you just you know broaden the, the horizons of this this podcast so we we thank you again for joining us and uh, I would like to pray over you and pray over this time that we've had today so we ask you to join us in prayer Amen. dear Lord we thank you for this day and uh, we thank you for all that you are doing through Juanita, Lord. We just um, pray that you continue to bless her and bless this ministry here at Christians Women Job Corps in Dublin and um, bless all the ladies that walk through these doors, Lord. That they, that If there's somebody that is um, not sure about it, Lord, that they would 
say yes, that they would apply and, and come here and just be transformed by, by all that you can do through them and all the things that Christian Women's Job Corps provides. God, we also want to pray over the war in, in Ukraine, Lord, over, over the innocent lives that are being affected by this war, God, that you would intervene, that you would show your mercy on them, God, and just we pray that they they get the resources they need, and if there's some way that we can help other than prayer, God, that we would be of aid to them, Lord, and be of aid to our our foreign missionaries that are over in that region as well. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We'll see you all next Monday.